It's time for buy one, take one, starting at $12.99 at Olive Garden. Come for an irresistible meal here and leave with a great meal, too, so you can enjoy family time one more time. Buy one, take one, only for a limited time at Olive Garden. The U.S. women managed only one goal in their opening three matches of 2017. But Jill Ellis' side with no trouble finding the back of the net in the first 45 minutes against Russia today. Kate Abdo, Eric Winalda and Leslie Osborne back with you. Welcome along. The U.S. looking to make it seven wins out of seven all time at Toyota Stadium. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. As we said, the U.S. women looking to bounce back and making a strong start in this one, Leslie. Well, yeah, I love the numbers behind the ball. You see three of our players. Sam, you a little connection. I love this ball by Carly Lloyd. Crystal's done run behind the back line. And just a simple left foot, far post finish, clean, clinical finish. The weight of the pass is really everything. I mean, sometimes you see that go too far. Just puts her right in stride and lets her be a forward. Deserves a hug. Then not even 10 minutes later, and they had doubled the lead. Boy, I mean, Lavelle is having a heck of a half. This may not be the best of her moments, because she certainly had a couple, but this is a talent. You know, an in-swinger is always difficult on a, on a goalkeeper, but to hit somebody in the eyebrow that like that is pretty terrific. But watch this. This is just a completely different level. I mean, I, it's, it's just one of those things in her vision, her ability to, to not just have the talent to, to, to do something like this, but the audacity to, to try it. Puts, uh, again, and you see Pew right, puts it right on her foot, but she can't put it away. Terrific half for her so far. Good half for Crystal Dunn as well, getting a second in the first 45 minutes. Yeah, Mallory Pugh getting uh, the first ball header. And Crystal Dunn just being proactive defensively, getting this. When you, same as her first goal, almost exact same finish, left foot, clinical, far post finish. So 3-0 the score at halftime. Of course, we talked about Rose Lavelle in the pregame, Eric. We weren't wrong to do so. I'm uh, loving Lavelle. Let's just put it that way. And I think it's, you know, I, to go to uh, Ali Wagner's points uh, about it's been a long time since we've had a, a real number 10. Her vision is unbelievable. And her ability to see the picture as it changes almost uh, finds Pew uh, uh, in, uh, you know, in stride there. But this is just where it gets good. I mean, the, the ability to just get running at, 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 a, at a defense. Everybody's gets, guessing at what she's going to do. And then she has the ability for a long uh, a strike like that to test the goalkeeper. Um, look, it's all there. I mean, she knows when to pull wide. She knows, she knows when to find the little pockets. But how about some of this? We haven't seen anybody like this with the U.S. national team. That's a nutmeg, by the way. Probably could have gone down for a penalty kick. It, it turns out to be a fairly good chance. But it just doesn't stop. She's she, the defensive side of it. Uh, she gets the ball back, knows exactly what she's doing. I feel sorry for 18 on this play, but the truth is, is she's just she's just pure talent. It's, she's a joy to watch. It doesn't look like a player who only, what, a couple of games ago made her debut, Leslie? Uh, yeah, a couple of games, but she's confident. And right. you can tell that the She Believes Cup gave her that confidence, and she's continuing to build game after game. And it doesn't matter where we play her. She is succeeding, and these minutes are huge for her. She was the best player on the field against England. But, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't walk away with a victory. But I was going to say, who won the game, Eric, future, anyway? <laughs> way to rub that in. All right, well, Jill Ellis is side-seeking a return to their winning ways after consecutive defeats last month. Crystal Dunn on target twice so far with the second half still to come. You make me train longer. Drags it back and a shot and a goal for the United States for Carly Lloyd. You make me try harder. You make me dream bigger. And when something's in my way, you make me push through it. Lethal in front of goal. You make me see the person I want to be. The U.S. women with a comfortable lead over Russia as they chase their second win of 2017. J.P. Della Camera and Ali Wagner will bring you the second half commentary after the break. Welcome back, everyone. Alex Morgan will be in the 11 now for the second half. She'll replace Carly Lloyd. Ali Krieger is in. She'll replace Megan Klingenberg. Those are the two changes made for the U.S. And now we see Casey Short is going to be moved to the outside. We'll see if anyone else changes positions. The Russian team will make the one change. It's Pantihina, who's coming in, number 17, replacing Terahova. Second half, 
underway with the U.S. leading by a 3 0 score line. Two goals by Crystal Dunn and one by Ellie Long if you're just tuning in. Makarenko's pass now set long and wide. Well, she had so little possession in that opening half. Had to do an awful lot of defending. Shaking up. And that one got away. Sure, no Medina. Krieger with it. That's blocked. She'll follow it up. It's her 98th international appearance for Ali Krieger. And she'll be the next to hit that century mark in terms of caps. Back for short. Sauerbrunn on the ball. Jenny Tapp had a chance to talk with USA head coach Jill Ellis at halftime. Jenny, what did you hear? JP, well, you mentioned the changes that we're seeing, and Jill Ellis possibly going to make a few more. You know, she's looking at a few options here and continuing to evaluate. But the message at half, defensively, that regain mentality, she said she was pleased with what she saw there. And offensively, biggest thing, timing of runs and the movement, wants to continue to see what they can do up top. Yeah, there's six offside calls last time we checked. Too high. Done right. Played across. Too high. Goal kick for Russia. With the substitution with Alex Morgan coming in up top alongside Dunn, you think that's going to change the profile of the team a bit? Both like to get in behind. So Carly Lloyd was doing a nice job pulling off that back line and playmaking in that seam. It'll be interesting to see who fills that void now and if, if Rose does come inside even more. Morgan playing with Lyon in eight games in all competitions, five goals, including three in a French League Cup game. Getting more playing time. So happier now that she's making that adjustment more clear. And just getting settled in, you know, it's a hard transition to go overseas when you don't speak the language. But and it was a big signing, right? It's a big name signing. A lot of pressure. And anytime you start scoring goals, you'll feel a little bit happier and a little more settled. The U.S. with the ball deep in their own territory. Comes all the way back to goal to a listener. Pushed up on the right side by O'Hara. So right now you've got Ali Krieger as a center back in that back four. Normally she's the right back, but can play other positions. Here's Short. Down that left side. Pat Tahina's on the chase. Crossed in, right to go. Well, a lot of what Ellis has been doing is experimenting with players, seeing how versatile they are. And she told us yesterday she's, she needs to find three world-class center backs out of out of the ultimate group that she picks. So giving more players in that position an opportunity and perhaps seeing what Short can do in, in the four back again out wide. Here's Mewis, left side for Short. To the feet of Alex Morgan, inside the box for the U.S. Cutting it back, but the flag was up again. Seven offside calls against the U.S. tonight. That's a number you don't generally see in any game, 90 minutes. No, but Russia hasn't been putting pressure on the ball, so Casey Short has the time to slip that in. And yeah, the timing's off, but but the U.S. will be happy that they are on that restraining line, on that edge, trying to get in behind. And it's the same situation for Morgan. She's looking at least at a defender. Run across the line longer. Dunn escapes. Cuts it in front. Long flip the shot. Looks to get it back. Lavelle. And that's high and wide. Ali Long can't believe that one. And that's how she missed the first shot that pinged off the post. She opens up with the inside of her foot. This is so good by Crystal Dunn just to get through that traffic. But Long tries to go with the inside of her foot. And it just skims by her. Same thing happened in the first half. If you take a smaller motion on that, you can redirect it just in a tighter frame on goal. No need to wind up. We had mentioned before they want to have three outstanding center backs. One center back that's not here is Julie Johnson. Had a good excuse getting married and then a honeymoon. 
So that's why she's not here. And the U.S. is also missing three other key players. Morgan Bryant, Lindsey Horan, Tobin Heath, all missing because of injury. They were on the original list of 24 that Jill Ellis announced. Played forward by the U.S., but that's too far, and it goes right back to the Russian goalkeeper, Veli Iva. Casey Short's an interesting story. For more on that story, here's Jenny. Well, it's quite the journey, JP. Three knee surgeries in four years for Casey Short. Her first ACL injury was in 2011. She missed her senior season at Florida State. The second came in 2013 while she was playing for the under-23 national team overseas. She tore the ACL and MCL. That was the other knee, the right side. And unfortunately, she started to realize about a year later that the knee still was not feeling well. So she had to have that knee repaired again. And she said, really, it was hitting rock bottom for me mentally she was destroyed but she told me she had two options right she could feel sorry for herself or she could fight for this and the dream was always the national team that has always been what has kept casey short going to get to this point that is perseverance would you say Ali? a lot of people women or men might have given up the game after three yeah because i mean i've torn two acls the fear that sets in when you cut and when you go into challenges, it's always in the back of your mind. As much as you can recover and get strong, you have that fear of doing it again. And if you've done it three times, I can't even imagine how you rebound from that. Good for Casey Short. And really exemplary for any young athlete to hear when they do set, get a setback through injury that you can rebound and ultimately have your dream come true. Just the second corner kick for Russia. Trailing by three goals in the 53rd minute. Right to the middle. Never got there. The chase is on. Russia will collect. Makarenko. Tentacle Turner Medina. But it's cleared out by Short. Throw in here for Russia. Tatiana Shekina for that throw in. One of the air by Krieger. Be a throw in for the U.S. I think the U.S. has quite found their rhythm yet in this half the way they did in the first. We're in Captain's arm here now with Sauerbrunn. That Lloyd substitution played long, intended for Dunn. Settled by Long. Casey Short for Mallory Pugh. to go wide and despite that effort it's going to be a corner kick for the united states fourth one they'll play it short we saw some of this in training yesterday laval played it in it's going to be a good corner Time All American out of the University of Wisconsin, Rose Lavelle. Went short again, but that's cut off. Deflected off of Ali Krieger, throw in for Russia. And I don't mind mixing it up on corner kicks, but the U.S. has been very successful against Russia, lumping that in the box. I think you continue doing that. of his pass now set long O'Hara's on the chase bumped off the ball two in the box this time for Russia and that one gets away it's not very often tonight that they've got numbers four that time there was only two in the box but could have had a threatening situation yellow cards coming that was a great ball by Russia to slip Sochneva in in behind O'Hara on that far side. Danilo was the player booked. And she just comes in late. That That is a bad challenge. 
absolutely deserves a yellow card for that. She's been wearing the captain's arm in this half with the substitution of Tara Hoba. Long is on it. Goal scorers, Crystal Dunn has two, Ali Long has one. Carly Lloyd picked up her 55th career assist for the U.S. Women's National Team on that first goal by Dunn, and Rose LaBelle with her first assist, probably the first of many for the U.S. on that goal that was scored by Long. It was off the corner kick. But it was really a half about LaBelle, wasn't it? So many great moves. Nearly had her first goal as well. Dunn went down. Pugh tries to win it. Has some help from Lewis. Mallory Pugh just wanted that ball more than anyone else. Sees the run of Morgan. That cuts inside. Pugh thinking, looking. Trying to give it to Dunn. Ran into traffic. As good as Mallory Pugh is on the ball, I think... Today against Russia thus far, she's taking too many touches, trying to take on too many players. She had Alex Morgan with a nice little run. She could have slipped her in, but opted to hold on to it too long. Hewitt scored a goal in her international debut against the Republic of Ireland. That's the first time we saw her, this national team. This is Pew up the middle. That time she tried to find Morgan, cut off, and then sent out by Makarenko to corner for the U.S. They're sixth. Well, that's better from her. Little two, three touches there. Releases it early. You're not going to be able to have so many touches against some of the top teams in the world. Lavelle from the far side of the stadium. The U.S. is crowding in front of Believa. Sent in low at the near post. Intended for Pew, cleared away. Short was back there to defend. Ball clipped forward. It was intended for Karpova. O'Hara. Lewis. Calling for the ball. Open that time, and the flag is up again on Crystal Dunn. Such a good ball by Samantha Mewis. Just pings it out wide, and at some point, I'm hoping I'll have to stop saying that Dunn was offside, but she's she's again looking down the whole line. Eighth offside call against the U.S. Four times on Crystal. But she does have two goals. Well, she could have a few more. Yeah. Makarenko. Pushing it into the middle. It's going to be too long. O'Hara has a beat on it. It's knocked away from her, but it's a USA throw in here in the 59th minute. O'Hara's been a part of the last couple of Olympics. Have that big goal against Germany in the semifinals at the Women's World Cup in Canada. That game in Montreal. Casey Short into the middle. U.S. Big quick move from the tallest player in the field for the U.S. Sauerbrunn slipping it through. Another ball, but it's behind Mallory Pugh. The idea was good. I like that look by Morgan. Nice little one-two for Lavelle, but she's got to keep her run alive. She held it back. I think if she goes at full pace, she gets on the end of that, possibly. Free kick for Russia. Just over the halfway line. Makarenko. Set long by Bill and Seba. Done on it. Short for Krieger. We playing this year with Orlando in the NWSL after a few years with the Washington Spirit. Foul 
call there. The free kick is coming. Long's been on the receiving end of a lot of these fouls tonight. Up the wing. Hina left it off. Dunn takes over. Connick for it. Morgan keepers out. It's blocked. Dunn, maybe a hat trick. Trying to free herself up for the shot. Now plays it across on the right. O'Hara inside for Pugh. Punch down. Still in the box. And Rush is able to deal with it and clear it away towards Korpova. That goes against them, against Russia. Mewis. Slowed down by Danilova. Krieger. U.S. still with that 3-0 lead. All the goals coming in the first half. Short. Allie Long. Goes through. Easy touch right back to goal. And this is good from the U.S. Jill Ellis talked about regains. Well done. Wins it and then plays a nice ball into Alex Morgan. We didn't get a wide picture of it, but Alex Morgan held a run nicely to stay on side. Her angle is cut down very well by Belly Iva. Good save by her. The Krieger pass for Ali Long, pulling it back against Karpova. Sarba. Pushing it ahead. Slipped it by Mewis. O'Hara bringing it inside. And that's going to be too far. All of the players that we talked to yesterday, Ali, so pleased that the CBA was finally done. Sarban was one of the leaders of it. And all of the players described it as a win win. And now we don't have to ask them that question anymore. So it's a relief to us, too, right? Absolutely, but you know, a, a huge statement for these players that they don't have to think about it anymore. They fought for what they wanted, and by all accounts, they got it. Mallory Pugh down the left. Looking, try to cross it. She will earn the eighth corner for the U.S. Well, I think the interesting point for me that came out of the CBA was how much they fought for the NWSL and the standards in that because. That's for everyone, not just the U.S. national team. And they know that the U.S. national team needs those players to stay in the game to compete for these spots. Hugh finding the open. Sauerbrunn looking, shooting low, just wide. Looking for her first international goal. Kristen Press is going to be coming into the game. Replacing Crystal Dunn. Making their third change, USA substitution. Two goals of the line for Crystal Dunn. Crystal Dunn. Press now for Jen. And upon that substitution, let's get more details on that CBA. Jen Tapp knows a lot more than we do. Jenny. Well, it's been interesting to talk to so many players about all the changes. And what stood out to me, Carly Lloyd telling us yesterday, really a win-win for both sides. And there are many differences to highlight and areas to discuss. One of the big ones that stood out to me is those players who are playing overseas. We just saw Dunn come off. And now that they're playing overseas, they're going to have the ability to be flying in business class. Some things that may seem small, but I asked U.S. Soccer about it. They said this was a, a natural evolution. And in the past, they've had so many more men playing overseas. But now for the women, they will be flying business class. And I asked Morgan about it yesterday. She said she joined the team late. It made the process so much smoother. And hey, it's pretty nice when yeah. you're flying business class. So just a little something to keep in mind on the changes and the equality that this team is going to be seeing. That's what the men do. That's how they fly when they're coming over for their World Cup qualifiers and, and other matches. So that's good. It's, it's a, a no-brainer. Yeah. Big week for women's sports, right? Because the USA hockey team, first it looked like there may be a problem there, maybe a strike, maybe replacement players, but they sorted that out. And the USA women's hockey team seemed to be pleased with what they were able to receive as well from USA hockey. So a huge week, I think, in women's sports. And Ireland got their FA to acquiesce to their request as well. And they were asking for very simple things. I actually liked a, a tweet Julie Foudy sent out which said, how about these federations be a little proactive instead of being reactive yep. in these situations? 
It's about time. Women deserve these standards. Jenny, go ahead. You have more. Well, compensation definitely was something that had been discussed throughout this entire process. And an example that U.S. Soccer gave me was for a Tier 1 player for the national team, meaning NWSL and U.S. Soccer, a base salary would be $165,000 or more. And that is without winning a single game. This is Q coming in. Does she get the call? Referee's pointing to the spot from an angle low. And the yellow card as well to Shakina. Penalty kick here for the U.S. And this is just a pretty buildup between Morgan and Pugh. Her touch gets away from her, which thinks, gives Shakina the, the idea that she might be able to get there, but takes out Pugh in the process. Ali Long is ready to take this. On the whistle to make it 4 nothing, and she put it over. What were we saying before? All of her goals are on headers, and she said that penalty kick, and then an earlier one. She where can't she buy one tonight. Yeah. With her foot, at least. And she stays open to that all the way, sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, but does not get over it. Every player is frustrated when they don't score a penalty kick. Shakina in the 66th minute. Long a part of the Olympic team last year in the NWSL. Six goals and a couple of assists in the 15 games that she played in. Very versatile players we talked about before. What is going to be her position? Maybe still TBD, right? I think it is too TBD, but I do think that center and midfield is where she'll land with the option and the versatility to play in that back line. And we haven't talked much about this going from the three back to a four back. As much as coaches don't like to talk about it. Megan Oyster is going to make her international debut for Kelly O'Hara, who had a strong game. I thought Kelly Hare was big time. And what I liked out of, of her play tonight was her connection with Rose Lavelle. And although it's so early to talk about partnerships, I thought her and Rose played very nicely off of each other. They combined well. Their spacing was right on. Their chemistry just looked good. And, and any time as a player, you, you sense that, you feel that with a player, your confidence rises. She needs she had a ton of playing time. So, Oyster make her debut. We'll see how she does. She'll have about 20 plus minutes. But going back to the three back, JP. You know, I don't know that the U.S. is necessarily done with it. I think it's going to be a tool in their arsenal, but I, I don't necessarily think it's something that the team is going to go to as their number one formation. And yes, that's where you put players when, when you kick off and everyone moves after that, but staying in the 3-5-2 offensively and defensively did not work out great against some of the top teams in the world, specifically France. That's was so good too on that night. Here's short. Still on the ball. And tackled out. Another USA corner. Should be their eighth coming out with Lavelle taking it. Another short one. This was for Pugh. Lavelle picks it up. This time on her right foot. Trying to play the ball through its block. Sour broad. Outside for Pugh. Mallory Pugh loads one up. The header. There's one. Hallie Long. What she does best. Her head. <laughs> Second goal of the night for Hallie Long. 4 nothing U.S. Well, the U.S. hasn't been serving the Bucks all that often tonight. A lot of their play has been going centrally. 
But in this situation, Short has time on, excuse me, Pugh has time on the ball. Long gets on it with her head. And it looks like a little deflection helps her there. But if Allie Long can't buy one with her foot, I think she'll take two on the night with her head any day over. So a four nothing lead now. Two goals by Long, two goals by Dunn. We're announcing it as Allie Long. We're hearing that it might be called an own goal, but we'll try to get another look at it. And in the meantime, Russia has made another change. We'll get to that in a second. Pushed wide. Flag is up again. And we're going to get a good look at it. It's so hard to tell. That other defender gets in the way and shadows. Our right line now, they're of giving sight. it to Ellie Long. Right and now, she, anyway. And she stood up and claimed it as any any good attacker Correct. would. Correct. So while we're on replay, Shakina was subbed out. Senia Kovalenko came in as a replacement. So it's the third change for Russia. In a space. Long leads it inside and press misses. Trying to finesse that ball through. Here's another look at the, the goal by Ali Long. It looks to be hers. Her. That'll be a tough one to take away. Bella Mitseva was going toward it. Right now they're saying long, so it's two for her, two for Crystal Dunn, four for the U.S. Looking for more. Hugh. Press. Cutting inside. Looks for help. Drops it off. U.S. Sarber. That ball went out of play for a throw in for Russia. In the 73rd minute, that is the new player with Kovalenko. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, even though we haven't seen quite as many opportunities on the Russian side of things, and, and speaking to their captain, and that's Elena Terahova, who was subbed out earlier, she told me yesterday that this team is going in the right direction, and that is all thanks to their coach, and that's Elena Fomina, who was, who was picked in 2015, selected to take over the Russian women's national team. She's the first female head coach, and she has experience playing over 100 caps for the national team and World Cup experience, and she said, that she's made them smarter, they understand the game better, and they're more confident. So this team going in the right direction, and they were just thrilled to have the opportunity to be in the United States to play against the U.S. and just to learn from these kind of game experiences. They are going in the right direction. This kind of game will help them, but they are in an awfully tough group with Germany, Sweden, and Italy. And that's going to be a tournament they're going to look to manage expectations and grow, get some of these younger players' experience, because it's going to be hard for them to come out of that group. But what I like to see is that their, their federation is investing them. They went to the Manaus tournament. They went to La Manga. They went to Algarve. These are all recent tournaments that they've been a part of. And the federation is really getting behind them and giving them these experiences to bring them over to the U.S. to play in these types of matches. It's what you want to see in the world's game, in the women's game. Another booking to Holoviaga. Third yellow card issued tonight. All three of the Russian players. Free kick from inside the circle for the U.S. They'll send it out wide, short. Wouldn't be one at the moment on the sideline. Going wide. Let's see if that's just going to be a throw in deep. For Lavelle. It's going to be a, it's going to be a corner. Ninth corner, for the U.S. Lavelle. This one is deflected and cleared away. 
All the way back towards the circle. Sarban with the chase won it back for Lissadaire. Another 15 minutes or so left with some stoppage time. The U.S. in control of this. Really from the get-go. For the 4 nothing advantage. Perenko lost it out. Another corner. Double digits now for corners. Another short one. This is Lavelle on that left foot. Trying to cut it inside. 11th corner coming up. I don't even think her team was ready for them to take it so quickly. Lavelle pushing it inside, never got there. Cut off by Ali Krieger. First fly by Oyster. Press. Oyster trying to gain that in line. It's going to be knocked out. Throw in for Russia. And a good opportunity for Megan Oyster. She's done so well in the league, and it's nice to see her finally earn a call up. And get a first cap. With these friendlies coming up, you do have a chance to deepen the pool before the next couple of tournaments and the next meaningful games come up. 77th minute, USA with a 4 nothing lead over Russia. The second game will be Sunday in Houston, Texas. We talked about how Lavelle was going to come inside during this match, sit in that 10 spot. She hasn't done that as much as we thought. A lot of her movement has been on the ball, dribbling it inside, but she hasn't been found in that pocket, in that little gap underneath the two up top, which right now is Morgan and Press. And I want to see her in there. I want to see what she can do with players coming from all angles, and she's got to turn and face up and slip someone in. Looks like Megan Rapino may be the next. USA sub getting the warm up top off. US have made four changes in terms of subs tonight. Ah! Haven't seen Megan in a while. She, like Klingenberg, coming back from injury. So she was not on the She Believes Cup roster. Off that throw in. This one's blocked. Coming out. Major League Baseball is back. American League Central rivals New York Yankees going up against the Baltimore Orioles. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern only on FS1. It's the USA throw in here in the 79th minute. A 4 0 lead. Lavelle. Press. Shot was blocked. Russia looking to go forward, but there's only one player up top, and that's Karpova. Two defenders who are back for the U.S. All the way back to goal, Galeyeva. Tough to fault her on the goals tonight that the U.S. scored. No, and she's had some decent saves, I think. Off Lavelle. Rapino and Rodriguez and Amy's another one that we haven't seen in a while coming back So two veterans who have scored some big goals are going to be coming into this game And Rose Lavelle gets a nice ovation coming out for Rapino This is the Rose Lavelle story a lot of this happened in the first half and it was really the Rose Lavelle show Here she is just cutting inside beating four players lining it up with their left foot but how about this on the end line i would never think you could pull that off with those tight of angles taking it with your left foot on this right side but she's able to do it and then this is just special the heel slip final pass into pew i don't even think pew was expecting it and then long wasn't able to make it a highlight reel but it was the rose lavelle show and more to come from her i mean Sitting in her third cap in that kind of confidence bodes well for the future. All the way upfield, it's Krieger. 
So the two subs are Rapino and Rodriguez. Lavelle and Pugh, part of the USA's nice looking future. On the bench now watching the rest of this game. So Amy Rodriguez, the last time we saw her was in October of 2015 against Brazil. Since that time, birth of her second child, now she's back playing for Kansas City in the NWSL. And Megan Rapinoe's last appearance was last September against the Netherlands. So welcome back to those two players. And all they've been, although they've been here many times before, you know that they've got a little nerves going on in their system. Because it's always like the first time when you come back. Rodriguez finds Krieger. U.S. will earn another corner kick. Rodriguez and Rapino were both part of the She Believes Cup initial training group, but they were not chosen for the team. This is the 12th corner now for the U.S., and now Rapino will take these. Normally she does take corners and free kicks for the U.S., but she's not been there for a while, so Lavelle has been taking them, or Tobin Heath before that. Bouncing inside the box, and that's cleared away. Krieger. Back to Rapino. Send inside. On the block. Long. Couldn't keep it alive there in the box. Off Sarber. Short back with it. Wide for press. Who now pops up on his left side. Into the middle. Mewis. Long. Trigger going inside and the shot was blocked off of Rapino's attempt. We haven't talked much about Long and Mewis in the center of midfield because it's been about Lavelle and Pugh on the flanks, but I think those two have a nice partnership going on. They're setting play, they're, they're spraying the ball around the park and getting it to their playmakers. Rapino from the near sideline to take it. 15 to the red of the U.S. Again, it's short. It's Krieger firing. That's blocked. Sarva back to defend. Krieger's moved up to play now on the right side with Oyster playing more centrally defensively since she came in. U.S. Tremendous work rate from U.S. She was working well with Morgan Bryan the last time, but Bryan is another one of those players tonight injured. So an opportunity for Long and U.S. to play as a partnership there. And I think that Mewis has been outstanding every game. She seems to get a little better. I mean, we've lost her a bit tonight, but her ability to separate, her ability to spray the ball is so big time. With separation, here's Morgan. Playing it in front, knocked out for another corner. 14th one for the U.S. That time, there was no flag raised. No good timing. Morgan's in. Gets her head up, and that's Mewis she's trying to find. Another Rapino corner. And going short on these this time a change. It's deflected. Krieger up for it. Second ball cleared away. For a cop of up. By herself ready at the moment. And now short disrupts it. Just as rush she got a couple of players forward. Not much Carpenter could do. Pretty much on an island tonight. U.S. pushing it up. That's Rodriguez looking, playing it for post area. This was the closest one to that. It's going to be a throw in for the U.S. In the fifth minute, two, 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 two goals by Dunn, two goals by Long tonight. In for press. Over 15,000 in the stadium tonight watching this one. USA versus Russia press a deflected ball. It's going to be another corner kick for the United States. Should be 15 for them. And once again, it's Megan Rapino. Plays for the Seattle Reign of the NWSL to get their season starts April 15th. Four games on that night, one on the Sunday the day after. 
Kaliyeva knocked it away, but there's Krieger firing it. That's high. Almost put an exclamation point on this night. Twenty-six to five, the huge edge in shots, and it's going to be like that with all of the numbers tonight. From possession to shots, shots on target, corners, you name it. All U.S. tonight, as expected. I, I thought Russia was perhaps going to give the U.S. a bigger challenge than, than they have to this point. The game has been played in the U.S.'s attacking half, in both halves, really. Press, pulling it back. Slotting it through. Morgan, tough angle, wanting to play it across. Spinning away, and that's knocked away. Morgan fights to try to win it, and does win it. Krieger, Morgan, played it across. Another corner. And that's something that Jill Ellis wants to see out of her front runners is that work ethic, working back to regain possession. Something Alex Morgan hasn't always done, and she's been doing it overseas with Lyon, and you can see that right there, that initial mentality to earn the ball back. Corner from Rapino, 16th one, driven across, headed down wide. Mewis was there. Fourth straight start for Sam Ewis. Became a regular in the She Believes Cup. When Jill Ellis was looking for players, she may have found one there against three good opponents. She got the starts, and now, again tonight, she continues. I think she's absolutely earned herself more playing time and a starting role at this point, in my mind. I mean, that ball right there, there's not a lot of players on the field who can ping it like that. I don't think there's another one. He was still on. Big switch. Headed down by Krieger. Running after it, Rodriguez. From FC Kansas City. Dropping it back for Krieger. Long. 88th minute. A deflected ball. Didn't find anyone in red. Oyster. Pulling it back. Long. Tackle away. Right to Casey Short. Sending it inside. Press. Holds. Shoots. And that's wide. She did well to free herself up for that shot. She did because her touch died on her, but she used her body well to get herself a little bit of space to try to whip that in, curl it into that back post. 89th minute, 4-0 USA over Russia. That missed a couple of players in the air. Short battles. And Tahina. US ball, push back. Mewis, Rapino, Megan going inside, looking, knocked ahead by Morgan for press. And that's knocked away, and the foul goes against the U.S. Kristen Press. She's going to get spoken to and booked as well. First yellow card tonight against the U.S. And this ball over the top by Morgan bounces up. Press opts to go with her boot. You can't do that. It's Bella Mitseva, who was the player, fouled. 90th minute, we'll see about stoppage time. 4 nothing lead for the United States. They have checked most of the boxes tonight. They did, they, they responded. They. They're going to get their result. I think they looked a lot more fluid in their attack. Again, the opponent's not like one of the, the opponents they face in the She Believes Cup in terms of competition. But all good things from the U.S. Certain 
players stepping up on the Bell Show. Partnerships perhaps brewing. I thought Dunn and Boyd were very good with one another. Three minutes added on here at stoppage time as Short plays it to Buis. First minute of that minimum of three. Morgan. It's blocked. Emilova. A bouncer to such that I couldn't find it. Bigger can. Not at all. Rodriguez in these last 10, 12 minutes. About it's about getting them some time again at the international level. As far as Oyster is concerned, I think she's looked a little nervous. Been playing very short, simple passes, which is fine in your debut for the U.S. team. Keep it clean. Nice idea from Rapino. Almost from Kristen Press. Another down to Krieger. Nice move to free herself up. The final open space. That's knocked away. Knocked away by Bella Mitzvah. The U.S. gets it back. Reavers help. Long. Spinning away. Wide for short. She's going to take it down hard by Kotkova. Just seconds left in this one. So no foul was given there. This might be it. As soon as it's back into play. It's Morgan. Wow. Just wide. Rodriguez is on the chase. The past three minutes of stoppage time. Minimum of three years long. Cut off. Now just blasted upfield. Sauerbrot for Krieger. Keeping it alive. Play and that should do it. Game over. USA Alley with a convincing 4 0 win. Well, they got the result, they got the response they needed, and I think certain personnel have very good nights tonight. Overall, for the U.S., this was something that had to happen. Yes, they're in this development phase, yes, they're in this exploratory phase, but they still demand results, they still expect wins, and they came along with tonight, one tonight in, in a convincing fashion. Dunn was Crystal, fantastic. Yeah, Crystal Dunn had a strong night with a couple of goals for her. Uh, Ali Long also had two sandwiched in between them, but Dunn looked good up top, first with Carly Lloyd, and then in the second half Look, with I think, Morgan. I think she is versatile, but I like Dunn as a number nine for this U.S. team. She's just such a threat in behind. And if she can work on keeping onside, imagine how many more goals she might have had tonight. That was the only negative stat from the night. The last we checked, there was something like eight offside calls. And unnecessarily so. I mean, you like to see that, that you're on that line, that you're getting in behind, but you just got to be smarter in your positioning and, and with your timing. Good minutes for Lavelle. I mean, I, I want to go back to her because I thought she was the bright spot of the evening, got the U.S. off on the right foot, got this, the fans out of their seats because she puts on a show. 
and then the confidence that's brewing in her. I mean, Boston is going to reap the rewards of that when she comes to play in the NWSL next week. She had a great night. She's downstairs, Rose Labellas, with Jenny Taft. JP, thank you. Well, Rose, it's not often that Jill Ellis looks over at me during a game and talks to me about a player, and she did that about you tonight. She said, isn't Rose fun to watch? And I have to agree. We've been talking about your performance and how easy you've joined the national team. Where is this confidence coming from? Um, I don't know. I think being in the first couple camps and just learning from them and watching what they do on, on and off the field um, has helped when I'm out of camp preparing and just being ready for the next opportunity. Well, it was a big performance tonight from the national team, especially coming off the She Believes tournament. You guys wanted the offensive production. What are you most pleased about in seeing from the team tonight? Um, I think just coming out and redeeming ourselves. Obviously, She Believes didn't go as we would have liked, so we were trying to get back on the field and just um, show our attitude, show our mentality, and get some goals in the back of the net. Where are you most comfortable playing with the national team? Um, I, I like being on the inside, but Anywhere I can get on the field and touch the ball is fine. As you grow in your game and now you're going to be heading to Boston um, for your NWSL season, what are you still working on? What are you focusing on so you can just take your game even to the next level? Finishing. Scoring goals. <laughs> All right, it's as simple as that, Rose. Thank you for your time, JP. Hey, she almost had one tonight, but she did get her first career assist. A big night for Rose LaBelle and a big night for the U.S. women's national team. Two goals by Crystal Dunn, two by Ali Long. Come back with us, Kate, Leslie, and Eric standing by in our L.A. studios.